Find out what my research laboratory is doing to help women who are struggling with weight loss resistance during menopause. We've gone through this menopause transition journey together. Let's recap the evidence-based strategies that can empower women like you. I could not have done this without the support of Hone Health and Orange Theory. So thank you both for making this possible. We started out this series by explaining what happens to a woman's body during menopause, particularly the hormonal changes that occur. Then we moved into, well, what are the consequences of this? What happens to their muscle? What happens to body fat levels? And we frame this within the concept of muscle equals health, excess body fat equals sickness. Well, as we're navigating this, what can we do? Well, I've given advice where I said, please get blood work. Know your levels of estradiol, progesterone, follicle stimulating hormone. And then after we get this baseline data, notice that I jumped right into fitness lifestyle. I believe that is the most important thing you can do. And even if you can exercise right now, if you're having a bad experience with your menopause transition, if you can't exercise at a level that you used to be able to do, well, what can you do? Keep doing that. And then once we get you to a healthier place, as you project out on the rest of your life, you see yourself embracing and engaging in fitness activities. Related to resistance training, I believe that that's the foundation of your fitness program. And some of the things that we highlighted was we want you to lift with relatively heavy weights. In fact, you probably can be lifting heavier than what you think you can. We also suggested that the research says you wanna lift close to failure or near failure on almost all of your working sets. We also mentioned that estradiol therapy can have an added anabolic stimulus to your resistance training workouts. In terms of the role that your cardio should have, in earlier episodes, we mentioned the importance of your cardio to improve your aerobic fitness. We mentioned an efficient way to do this would be through high intensity interval training, although you don't have to use that. As long as you're exercising intensely and making yourself work hard, that is gonna be a stimulus to improve your aerobic fitness. And I also don't wanna forget, embrace what you enjoy. We wanna to gravitate towards the forms of exercise that we enjoy doing. We also mentioned some lifestyle patterns in this series. The most important one is one of sleep. Try as hard as you can to prioritize your sleep. We know that sleep deprivation works against your ability to build muscle and it causes up fat loss resistance. The other thing related to lifestyle factors is do what you can to have lower levels of stress. In terms of nutrition, focus on a whole foods type of diet. And what about hormone replacement therapy? We just talked about that in the last two episodes. And the way that we frame our hormone replacement therapy use is that it serves your fitness lifestyle. I went over all of the communications that I've experienced with women. Most of the women who communicate with me, about 90% of them tell me that their decision to start hormone replacement therapy was a really good decision. Some would say that it was the best decision they've ever made related to their health and how they're feeling. We also spent some time talking about this concept of weight loss resistance and how there's a lack of research on those of you who are going through menopause that have embraced a fitness lifestyle and the struggles that you're having to lose body fat that you've recently gained. I explained in one of these episodes that there appears to be a subset of women that do struggle with this and that we need more research in this area. As of the date of this recording, what my lab is currently doing is we completed the largest ever menopause fitness survey. In fact, it's not just the largest, it's the only one. We've had thousands of women who've embraced a fitness lifestyle give us their experiences as they've gone through the menopause transition experience. We're also working on a few case series studies. Now, what is a case series study? Well, a case series study is a very small initial study that precedes larger clinical-based randomized controlled trials. So what we're doing is recruiting a handful of women, putting them through different 
experiences, diets, programs, hormone replacement therapies, and documenting what their outcomes are. We're doing this with an intention on trying to learn as much as we can about weight loss resistance during menopause. So the first thing that we do as we recruit women who are experiencing weight loss resistance is we're validating if this is a true fat loss or weight loss resistance scenario. If this is confirmed, we're going to investigate exploratory interventions that can inform us on future larger scale interventions. So what are these exploratory interventions that we're looking at? Well, in our case series study, they are divergent in nature. We're gonna look at some feeding up strategies and some feeding down strategies. Let me explain both of these. In terms of feeding up, what we're looking at now is investigating a anti-inflammatory Mediterranean diet that as these women enter into our case series study, and this is really cool, we're actually feeding them more calories than what they have been eating for many months. So that's why we call this a feeding up study. And our hypothesis is that if menopause is causing an inflammatory response in the body and we feed with an anti-inflammatory diet, will this now make them more susceptible to experiencing fat loss success during this type of diet? The person that first introduced me to this style of dieting, his name is Vince Pitstick. We have some early anecdotal evidence that this type of diet, this Mediterranean style diet, even when we feed more calories, is helping women who had weight loss resistance that are able to now lose weight. The other approach that my laboratory is looking at is the actual opposite approach. What we're doing in this case is having subjects diet and actually dieting pretty severely. The theoretical rationale for this is, if you remember in a previous episode, we said that women seemingly have to diet very hard during menopause to lose any amount of body fat. So what we're doing is we're actually leaning into that and we're giving them a very low calorie diet for a short period of time and looking at the outcomes on body fat loss. Now, when you hear me say this, this should be very alarming to you. I myself have said multiple times, avoid crash dieting. Crash dieting is not a good approach. So why is my lab looking at very low calorie diets? Well, we're being very intentional about the type of aggressive dieting that we are implementing in these studies. I'm not gonna get into the details here, but what we're doing is prescribing a very low calorie diet that does prioritize protein, and we're combining this with multiple hours of walking every day. Now, what we're doing is we are pulling out resistance exercise and any form of high intensity exercise. So it's very low calorie combined with very low intensity, but high volume aerobic activity such as walking. Now here's the key. We are trying to force the body to respond to this very low calorie, high exercise volume intervention by dropping body fat, but by virtue of the study only being a few days long, it's not long enough to cause any muscle mass loss. It's not long enough to cause any negative consequences. Now we've already done some case series study work on this exact diet in women across the menopause transition. We've already completed some of this and our early results are I would say favorable at this point. So this is what I'll be working on in my research laboratory. I am very passionate and committed to finding out why do some women experience weight loss resistance? What are the best approaches to address this? Also, I want you to be on the lookout for something extremely special that can allow us to continue this conversation. Resilient Entertainment and I are working on an interactive style YouTube podcast where we're going to invite women going through menopause that are embracing a fitness lifestyle where they can come to the conversation and ask us questions. I'm gonna also have fitness professionals that serve this population. And we have a conversation. You come with questions and we're gonna propel the fitness professionals that work with this population to help answer the questions. Again, I'm very excited about this. And this is something that we can look forward to in the coming months. I wanna close again by thanking Orange Theory. I wanna thank Hone Health. And I wanna thank you. You have made me the happiest researcher on the planet. You've given me such great feedback on this entire menopause fitness series. 
You're giving me comments. You're giving me knowledge. This has been as sad as it was for the reasons why I got into this line of research. I couldn't be more excited about getting up every morning and doing research and reading research and communicating with you, um, reading your comments, having conversations with you on social media. Thank you very much for bringing this to life for me as a scientist. And remember, throughout this whole series, I brought the receipts and we trashed those pink dumbbells. I look forward to continuing this conversation in the future. Um, if you would, please comment, share this series with other people, particularly men. Men are extremely ignorant of the experiences that women have going through menopause. Share it with men, share it with other women who will find this beneficial. So thank you. Hey, Bill, what, what do we say? That's a wrap! Hey! <laughs> Wait, where are the camera guys at? Damn! There we go, we, we hugged. Yeah. Juju forgot his shirt, it's fine.